Good afternoon and welcome back to NASDAQ Trade Talks. I'm your host, Jill Melantrino, Global Markets Reporter at NASDAQ. We're coming to you live from inside ETFs in Hollywood, Florida. And joining us for the segment, we have Sal Bruno, who's the Chief Investment Officer over at Index IQ. And we're going to take a look at what's been a volatile start to 2020. Sal, it's great to have you back with us on Trade Talks. And so much for a quiet start to the new year, the new decade. There's been a lot of geopolitical events to contend with. Uh, you know, are there... Are you concerned about that? What does it mean for the markets? Will it become more of a buy the dip mentality like we saw in 2019? So, you know, as we start, first of all, thanks for having me on. It's great to be with you. As we were doing our outlook for 2020, sitting down in December of 2019, we were fairly positive for the year. There were a lot of positive developments later in the year. We had agreement on trade between the U.S., Mexico, and, and Canada on the USMCA. You had basically agreement with uh, China on, on trade. We had sort of a budget agreement get put into place. So there were a lot of positive developments that we thought would really propel the markets. Um, following on a really strong 2019, even better in 2020. One of the things we did highlight, though, are these geopolitical, we call the externalities, things that you can't foresee that can go wrong, whether it be you know, the, the skirmish with Iran, whether it be the virus coming out of China. So we, we try to talk to clients about trying to help stabilize their portfolios by using alternatives. Right. So different strategies like emerger arbitrage has a different set of risks and drivers than what's going on in the overall market or basically what's going on in the geopolitical realm. So it's really about deals getting completed. You can have you know, another company, one company offering another company and paying a premium over that. That really has nothing to do with what's going on in the rest of the world. So it's a really great way to dampen some of the volatility in the portfolio and try to get more of that absolute return. Yeah, and when you and when you look at liquid alternative ETFs, now that they're um, easier, it's easier to follow the lead of institutions. They are more liquid because they're in that ETF wrapper. You did, uh, you conducted a study with Greenwich Associates, and you're seeing almost nearly doubling of what uh, asset managers are going to allocate to to liquid alts. So that's the forecast coming out of the Greenwich survey. Mm -hmm. So they looked at it. It's about five trillion dollars in terms of alternative investments for, for institutions. Mm -hmm. Now, much of that is in the illiquid. About 20% or so is, is considered liquid. But when you get it down to the ETF wrapper, it's much, much smaller. It's about 50 billion or so. Mm -hmm. They're calling for more than a doubling over the course of the next 12 months. So we think that's a positive development. And we think as institutions lead the way, other investors will follow their lead and try and help immunize their portfolios against some of these geopolitical shocks. All right, we've been talking a lot about fixed income as well in a very low interest rate environment, yes. not just even in the US, but globally. Uh, for fixed income investors, how can they get exposure to it, but the right exposure to fixed income? So we think fixed income, people need income. Mm -hmm. And they're going to continue to, to invest in fixed income assets. We think it's really important, though, to have the right manager. You know, we don't really do a whole lot in terms of broad market cap weighted benchmarks in fixed income. We're all about a little bit more of an active tilt. Being that Index IQ is part of the New York Life Investments mm -hmm. Organization, we have access to some of the best fixed income managers around there. Where it makes sense, we bring out active fixed income ETFs. So whether it's leveraging our relationship with Mackay Shields, which is one of the premier muni bond managers out there, we have an intermediate term as well as an insured muni product, leveraging their expertise. We think it's really important the decentralized nature of munis uh, really, really calls for deep credit analysis, and they're, they're really great at that. We also leverage the expertise of the folks who run a pool, part of the general account money for the New York Life Insurance Company. And we brought out an ETF in the ultra short duration, less than half the year duration category. Again, to try and leverage the benefits of the expertise that exists in the greater New York Life organization. All right, now to wrap up here, the S&P 500, well, all the major averages had a fantastic year in yeah. 2019. Chances are it would be difficult to replicate that in 2020. Yeah. Are you looking for opportunities outside of the U.S. now? We think that there are tremendous opportunities outside the U.S. You look at you know very low even negative interest interest rates in parts of the rest of the world. You look at the valuations are extremely compelling. Um, you look where we are potentially in the reacceleration of a cycle. We think there are a lot of opportunities internationally. One of the things to always be aware of is the currency risk. And remember, when you're investing internationally, you're buying the local stocks, you're also investing in the currencies in which they're denominated. So you potentially have two things driving the, the returns of the portfolio. We advocate taking some of that currency risk off by potentially hedging. Um, think we do a 50% hedge across the board for the broad developed markets. That can reduce quite a bit of the of the volatility associated with the currency piece of investing. All right, Sal, great to see you as always. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Joe. And thanks for joining me on Trade Talks. I'm Joe Malentrino, Global Market Reporter at NASDAQ.